Hi, I'm Tom. Now, this is a bit of an impromptu video uh, because I'm right in the middle of redoing the ceiling of my garage where I'm adding some insulation to try to make my bathroom a bit warmer. I hadn't originally planned to do a YouTube video on this just due to the time involvement um, or a couple of days before Christmas and I wanted to try and get this done uh, whilst I'm off work. So forgive the lighting, forgive the sound, this isn't going to be the most well edited video you've ever watched. But I thought it was important that I share the process and just take you through, very briefly, take you through what I've done and some of the decisions I've made as I tackle this project. Now I'm kneeling down in the garage, which is an internal garage in my, in my house and above me is the bathroom. Now when we renovated the house back in 2021, we had the bathroom completely redone, new floor tiled, the whole shebang. Uh, and at the time, we had obviously taken the floor up, we were putting new floorboards down and getting ready to put concrete backing board down so that we could tile the, the floor. I, for some reason, decided it wasn't really worth insulating uh, the floor. I think it was a mixture of time pressure because we were trying to get the work done, uh, the availability of the builder and their kind of timelines. But after it was all done and we've had our first you know, two winters in the house, the floor in the bathroom is, is incredibly cold. Uh, not helped by the fact that it's a tiled floor, but it's incredibly cold. So. It's been on my kind of to-do list uh, ever since our first winter and the only real option available to me was to try to insulate the floor from beneath. So I did some reading, did some research and I'll just take you through uh, kind of where I ended up. So over the past couple of days I've taken down uh, all the plaster from the ceiling. So directly above me is the bath, the bathroom rather, and you can see some of the pipe, that's the drain pipe for the sink, and if we pan over here you can see the waste pipe for the shower, uh, and then there's feeds for the toilet, uh, and there's other feeds for um, the bath, the shower, the bath, sorry, and then there's feeds for the shower as well. And this insulation was not the insulation, sorry, the, the plaster was essentially a, a mesh that was plastered over, so it was absolutely horrible. But I got into a rhythm of basically breaking it and pulling it down, and between a bit of brute force and the multi-tool and a million metric tons of dust, um, I got it all pulled down. And that revealed basically all the all the joists that hold up the floor. If you look closely, you can see that kind of grey in between, peeking out between the floorboards, and that's the concrete backing board that all the tiling is done on. And it gave me a, a space of about 160 mil. So I'd already cut a uh, kind of a, an exploration hole so I could kind of get an idea of uh, what sort of space I was dealing with. So once, once I knew how much space I had to play with, I then started looking at the type of insulation that I wanted to choose. So my initial thoughts went directly to PIO, so maybe 150 mil of PIO, which I'd, I'd already used PIO to insulate the, the ground floor rooms. So I was kind of familiar with that. But it's not the easiest stuff to work with. It can be quite difficult to cut and quite difficult to pack up into, into place. The other big kind of concern I had with PIO was that when it's exposed to fire, it just emits black smoke. Um, and it has no fire retardants really at all, unless you're spending a lot of money. I think there are fire retardant PIO style solid insulation available but f from what I can remember in my research it's not cheap and I was trying to do this on a relatively limited budget 
So my other, so kind of once I'd ruled the PIOR out, ma mainly from kind of a smoke perspective, um, the other options were to go with a, a, like a mineral wool. Now, I didn't realize this, but there are two types of mineral wool. There's a, a glass mineral wool and a rock mineral wool. Continuing my research uh, and kind of reading into both of these, it became apparent that the rock mineral wool was the best choice. So it's very, very moisture resistant. It's hydrophobic, I think is the term. So that means it will wick any moisture away. Moisture was a consideration in case we ever get any leaks around the shower tray, which I had um, sort of earlier this year, uh, or any leaks in the pipes, etc. So that would at least mean that the water would be, would kind of wick through it uh, rather than sit in it and collect. So it's good for avoiding mold in the event that there is any, uh, any moisture. Uh, the other characteristic of it is that it's incredibly fire resistant. So that meant it was for me anyway it was very very <coughs> very suitable for the garage so obviously in my garage i've got my boiler up here on the wall i've got all my solar uh, inverter and battery and everything in there so in terms of fire risk the garage is probably you know number one so having something in the ceiling that wasn't going to simply melt and turn into black smoke was quite important for me just in terms of the, the fam, well, myself and the family uh, in the house. So that meant that was quite, uh, that was quite appealing to me in terms of uh, an insulation choice. It comes in slabs as well, uh, which mean it's, it's kind of easier to install. So I'll, I'll grab a bit of that now and show you what it looks like. So this is a piece of the insulation here. Um, it's 75 mil thick and as you can see it's it's quite rigid, it's quite dense, um, so it does, it does flex and bend a little bit, but it, it's actually it's more rigid than, than, I'd, than I'd expected. Um, but that, that's good because it means that when I push it up into the cab, into, in between the joists, it's not just going to fall out, which was a concern I had. Um, so that's the stuff. So because I've got 150 or 160 mil of depth in the joists, I'm just going to put two layers of this stuff in and that will give me uh, 104 or 150 mil um, of insulation and its U value is quite good. Obviously it's not as good as the PIR but trying to cut and install 150 mil PIR um, aside from the smoke and the melting and the fire resistance the actual physically trying to install that would have been very very difficult based on my experience with 75 mil PIO. So that's the choice. I did find the rock mineral wool to be a little bit trickier to find. I had to kind of hunt around for that. Most of the insulation you'll find, or that I found anyway, was the glass type. And the glass type is not as water resistant or as fire resistant as the rock mineral wool. So. Um, so I just had to hunt around until I found a company that buys that, that, that would sell that. Uh, in the end, I was buying it in bales, so it, it essentially comes in those slabs. I think they are, I can't remember, I think they're 1.2 meters by, by 400 or 500. I'm trying to look at the, it's, it's all out on my drive, but I can't see any, any dimensions, but I'll put that into the description of the video. Uh, the brand is, I don't know if that's pronounced Knauf or Nauf, but that's the brand and it's called Rock, Rock Silk. Uh, it's Rock Silk RS45 is the stuff that I ended up with. The other thing I want to briefly touch on is vapour. So one of the things I was concerned about, or at least thinking about, was whether or not I needed any sort of vapour management uh, when I was putting the insulation in. So obviously I've got a bathroom above me uh, when the shower is on or when the kids are having a bath, etc. That's a very moisture laden environment is probably fair to say. So I was concerned about basically interstitial condensation. Now I looked at different mechanisms and there's different technologies and, and what you need to do or you know, there's different um, 
different bits of kit you can buy in situations where you want to try to insulate from beneath. And in my case, uh, you know, again, this would have been much easier to do when the floor was up, but that, the hindsight is 2020. I uh, admit that, that that ship has sailed. So I kind of did lots of reading, uh, put lots of questions out on Twitter, and 90% of people and you know 90% of the responses and 90% of the stuff I read basically said it's not really a problem. Um, the garage itself won't get that cold because um, it is getting heat from the hallway and the utility room for these walls so they're uninsulated single skin walls. So it does get some heat from in there and obviously there's heat coming off the inverter, there's heat coming off the boiler, there's heat coming off the hot water tank so it doesn't really drop down that low. So the chances of condensation forming due to a sudden temperature drop is quite low. The other consideration was that the floor of the bathroom itself actually had a latex screed put down. So there's, there is electric underfloor heating in the bathroom so there was a latex screed poured when, when the floor was put in. So we would have uh, foam sealed all the edges all the way around, uh, everywhere that the, the self-leveling liquid could have escaped. So I was quite confident that that itself is a vapor, that's a vapor barrier, as it's a latex material. So I was quite happy that we wouldn't really get any vapor coming down through. Then we've obviously got the tiles themselves and then all the concrete backing board and then the floorboards. So there's quite a lot of material between the moisture and uh, between the vapor, sorry, and the garage. And then it would obviously pass down through the, the rock wall. So that's um, vapor permeable. And then eventually would come down through the plasterboard, which is also vapor permeable. So I'm, yeah, I'm very confident that I won't run into any condensation problems, but it is something that I will be conscious of and I'll probably check on it. Um, after the first year or so. So let me just show you now what I've done so far. So I've been at this for a couple of days uh, and I'll just kind of give you an idea of what the insulation looks like in situ. So here's a quick look at what the insulation is like. So it just, I just cut it to, it's a little bit wider than the gap. It's about, that's about 36 centimeters and it just popped up. So the slabs themselves are a little over 400 wide. So I do have to cut them uh, to kind of cut the edges to trim them down. But then as it happened, uh, they're just nicely sized so that whenever I do an off cut, uh, it fits in. Or I can kind of cut one of the off cuts in half and then both of those will sit together to form one of the runs. So uh, again, I think I've been quite lucky just in terms of how that's worked out. So there hopefully won't be much uh, wastage. Uh, things to consider are like the electricity cables. So you can see here, I've run the electricity cables underneath or yeah, underneath the first layer. And then when I come to put the second layer in, I won't put any around uh, those cables because I need them to be able to dissipate their heat. One of the risks when you're insulating uh, electrical cables is you can derate them. So if you run an electrical cable in between two layers of insulation for a couple of meters, the cable can't carry as much current without overheating. So that's just a, a consideration. Uh, any of the other cables that need to run along, so for example there, that runs along before it pops in between, they will sit in the 10 mil gap below the insulation but just above the plaster. So they'll have plenty of room to breathe as well. And then I just have to do some cuts and stuff around some of the piping. But otherwise, uh, this should, I hope, be relatively straightforward to pack all that insulation up. And once it's all done, I'll do, I'll do another little segment of the video and then just wrap up. So it's been a couple of weeks since I posted the first part of this video. And since then, I've managed to complete all the insulation and I've had the local building control come out and take a look to sign off on the first part of the project. Now it took me a little longer than I'd originally planned and that was due to some issues with the plumbing, uh, part of the bath plumbing. 
So if you look back at some of the sections earlier, or some of the earlier parts of the video, you'll, you'll notice there was a white pipe hanging down from the ceiling. So it turned out that the plumber, when he fitted the bath, just used a load of flexible piping. And that was also, as I discovered, leaking a little bit. So the, the trap on the bath itself uh, had been leaking. That's, that's probably been leaking for uh, 12 months, maybe. So I had to spend a bit of time, have a think about that, and essentially replace the pipe work. So I ripped out the, the plastic pipe, the flexible pipe, which hadn't actually been secured properly. There was a lot of PTFE tape. Uh, so I was kind of had the opportunity to put that right, so I did. Uh, and then I spent the remainder of the time finishing off the insulation, and I'll show you that now in a second. The building control inspector also came a couple of days ago, that that happened a lot quicker than I thought. Um, that he was able to come the next day to do the inspection, and he asked why I hadn't put in PIR. Recommended I put in more PIR, but after I'd explained my position on the sort of fire safety and the difficulty of working with the PIR, he kind of nodded and sort of accepted that. Uh, and was also happy with the, the thickness of the insulation meeting the, the requirements. So that was all good. So I'll give you a, a quick look now at what I've ended up doing, and then I'll wrap up. Not much different than what I showed originally, but now I just have the two layers of insulation. I've had to make some cuts, for example, around the waste pipes and stuff, uh, to make sure that uh, the insulation fitted up around them. A couple of places I've had to accommodate, for example, if you look there, you'll see some of the, uh, some of the pipe work for, I think that's the, the tap for the bath, uh, the tap for the, the shower, I think, whatever way that runs. So there's a couple of places where they've, I just haven't been able to do much with them, so I've tucked them in as best I can. And then if we follow it down a little, you can see this place is where this. Oh, I don't want to fall over. Oh, oh. This place is where the, the cables are coming through, um, and that will all get tucked up and tidied up uh, just above the plasterboard, as I've explained. And I've put that all the way to the end. I just have one last bit to do there in the corner, just above the consumer unit, where I think I can probably put a little bit more in there. Not much now, mind, but I'm just conscious of the, um, the void above that. Uh, in terms of what I had left over, I ended up having probably one and maybe that's half. I think there's five bales per pack, so a little over one and a half packs left over. So that's not ideal, but I can probably put that. I'll just put, put that up in the loft maybe or, or see if I can sell it to somebody to somebody local if they're having a look. So that's essentially where I've gotten to. I'm pretty happy with that as it's, as it's gone. So the next step now is to get the fireboard up. So the, the fireboard is here beside me. I've got a couple of sheets of that. So that will need to be installed. That, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna tackle that because the, the boards are very heavy. So I'll probably need to draft some help in for that or potentially get some get a professional in to, to both board and skim that. Um, building control are quite happy, as I said, so they just need, uh, they'll need to come back once more, once the fireboard has been put up and once it's been uh, skimmed. And in the meantime, I'll just make sure that I take plenty of pictures in case, just in case they query anything. So, so that's it, I won't do any more uh, as part of this video um, and I'll do another update uh, or another video once I've got all the plasterboard in but yeah that's it so here's to a warmer bathroom I hope if you've any questions or you want to know more about what I've done please leave uh, please leave me a comment and I'll, I'll do my best to answer that if you've enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe uh, if you're also interested in maybe supporting me on my journey as I make these videos, there's a buy me a coffee link in the description. So if you find any of this sort of stuff useful, um, I'd appreciate your support. It'll help me uh, continue making these videos. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.